So I'm interested to see. So let's give it a try. Then we can come back to something better. Hang on, buddy. Less cautious, but I put it in slow mode. We've got a slow mode. Let's see what that's like. Oh, it doesn't seem very slow. Alright, here we go. Seems the same to me. I guess it's a little slower. Okay. Thank you. 
Crank up. Oh, you smell, kiddo. You got such a smelly butt. Oh, I see. Did you make a mess somewhere? Or are you just, just messy on yourself, huh? I know. You're not going to want to wipe. You're going to scream. I know. I know. Uh, I don't even know. We've got to find one place. Is that too much? It's not your She gets so cranky. Not that I can blame her. Right now she looks pretty raw.
Check, check, mic check. One, two, hello. Are we mic'd? I think we're mic'd. I'm gonna move this tunnel over just a little bit so when they're playing in it, maybe you can see it past me just a bit. Here we go, like that. We'll try it anyway. Oh, oh, noises. Okay, kids. Ugh. Hi, uh, let's see. Let's see what Discord says about being able to hear me okay. Probably fine. All right, looks like it's good. So, uh, what's news? Not much, really. Everything is basically the same. Uh, these kids went in for their first vaccines. They did fine. They had a, a perfectly fine health check. Um, one of them might have had a very slight little heart murmur, but that's, at this age, perfectly normal. So it's nothing. I don't even remember which one it was. Uh, I know at their next visit, they'll probably be fine. So uh, not a big deal. They usually grow out of it. So like I said, uh, not a thing. Um, otherwise, though, they passed with flying colors. It's the healthiest class that we've had in forever. It's real nice. They just, they haven't been sick. They haven't had any problems. They're just fantastically easy little kittens which is nice. It's a nice change. Um, crank is still Crank. Uh, I'd say basically no change for her so far. Uh, you might have noticed I just had to take her to wipe her butt a little bit, but uh, what you probably didn't notice is that I had to give her a bath first thing this morning, and uh, last night an enema, and there's regular enemas, and there's regular baths. Uh, hardly a day has gone by where we don't have to do that, so... It just, it just is what it is for now. Um, fortunately, she seems like she's enjoying life, so that's what's important. Um, she's, she really does not enjoy the bath part, though. <laughs> um, it's better than the wipes, I guess. I think, I think maybe we need to find different wipes or something. I should try some that are just... Um, I should try like a paper towel with some water or something to see if that makes a difference for her. But I don't think it will. I think she's just sensitive to anything at this point. Um, I think that's it though. There's not, there's not really anything else to talk about news wise. Things are, um, you know, holding steady. Uh, just a lot of the, a lot of the same for the kittens. I feel like there was something I wanted to bring up, but I can't think of what it was now. So I guess that's that. Um, oh, uh, you might have seen Gadget and Custard together this morning. They get along great. They've, they've gotten along great the whole time. They're not like really actively playing, but they do sort of flirt with it once in a while. So I'm hoping that eventually they can actually play together. That would be fun. I wanted to bring Gadget down here for today's mailbag because I know that's been a popular request, but uh, she's just not into these kittens that aren't hers yet, and she seemed a little extra hissy with them this morning, so I just wasn't gonna, I'm not, I wasn't gonna do it. It wouldn't have lasted. Um, I don't trust that sniffing around teaspoon. What are you sniffing over there, huh? I don't trust it. Well, I don't smell anything there. Okay, just don't stand that way, buddy. You're making me nervous. Um, I guess, uh, yeah, I can't think of uh, much else to say about the kittens. Uh, oh, and um, uh, their mom, Hazel, is not here right now because little Crank and Teaspoon are here. She's not super bad with either of them, but they don't like her very much because she makes them nervous. So it's better off to not have them, especially for little Teaspoon. He gets so shy and nervous about things. He's a real scaredy cat, actually. Um, probably because he spent so much time having his own space and uh, not really seeing a lot of other people. He just kind of does his own thing. And that's all right. He's been very healthy lately. I haven't had to give him an enema in forever. The GI diet is really working for him. And we put a uh, little crank on the same diet and I think it helps her, but not enough to really make a difference with anything that we have to do. So um, I'm keeping her on the diet because like I said, I think it helps her, but it's, it hasn't really changed the amount of work I have to do with her, which is fine. I've gotten pretty used to it. It just is what it is at this point. Uh, 
Yeah, oh, so Hazel, the other thing I was going to say about her is that she is uh, extremely angry at Custard and possibly uh, Gadget for some reason. When I have the two of them in my office and she comes to the door, she makes these noises. It's the same noises that Maggie makes when she's actually in a fight, except nobody's touching her. She just, she just sounds like she's in the middle of a fight. It's crazy. Uh, so obviously... Hazel cannot be around Custard or uh, Gadget at any time because I can see that that's just not going to work for them. And I have no idea why it's those two. I mean, I can see why Gadget because Gadget, first off, can be a little hyper. And secondly, Gadget, uh, you know, spent a lot of time coming to her door to antagonize her. So it makes some sense if that's the case. But uh, she'll do it even when it's just Custard. And I'm not sure why that would be. Uh, just doesn't like him very much, I guess. Uh, she does get pretty worked up though when she when she starts to get nervous about anything she gets hissy at everybody including her own kittens so uh, she, she when she gets worked up about something everybody's a target uh, yeah all right well hey let's do some mailbag it's gonna be a short one I can tell um, there's not a ton of stuff for us to go through here today but that's fine that's the way I like it I can I mean, get more stuff done this weekend you know uh, it's, all, it's all good not a complaint. So, let's see here. All right, just addressed to Kitten Academy, which is us. So it got to the right spot. One of the nice guys at the uh, post office this morning. First off, I went in and there was nobody at the counter. And then he came out and he was carrying all my stuff. So he must have seen me coming in and went ahead and got it. That was really a nice feeling. Uh, but then secondly, as I'm starting to leave, he goes, oh, by the way, uh, you know, I never officially got introduced to you. What's your name? And I said, oh, it's Chris. Um, and uh, his name tag says Will. So I said, and you're Will, right? And he said, yeah. Um, and it just, it just seemed weird because he's been there for at least a year now. And I've always wished that that's something I could do. I think the longer that you go without saying like an introduction to somebody... Uh, at least for me, it always seems more and more awkward to do. Like it's just the pressure then is on where you just can't, once you've missed it at the beginning, it just gets worse and worse where you're like, you can't just, I don't know why I can't though, because I didn't mind him doing that at all. It seemed perfectly natural. I should just be able to do that where I'm like, oh, you know, I've known you for seven years, but I never really got your name. Who are you? <laughs> and there's so many people in my life. There uh, have been so many people in my life that I could do that with. It's, uh, it's embarrassing, but uh, I should. I should just do it. You know, nobody minds. It's just one of those things that you get all up in your head about. I do anyway. All right. Let's start here. This says, hello, Mr. and Ms. Shiny Butler. We are waving our tails at you from our backyard in Colorado, which has become our favorite place this summer. Our duders try very hard to play with us during the workday, but their work seems so worky. So, most of the time, we nap in the cat tree or in the windows near them. Sometimes we come on their video meetings and tell our opinions. This meeting, too long, too boring, not enough spoogles. So, usually, after a long, quiet day, it's time to go outside. We can always tell, because these humans put on their hats and they'll say, Well, is it time? Then Wellies gets very, very excited and runs down the stairs. Sometimes we bonk our whole faces on the screen door. How rude. It happened to Wellies once and Squally twice, all in the same week. Then after we launch past the screen door, the smaller human will let us out of the little black patio gate. This is the best part. We run past the gate and immediately do barrel rolls on the patio. We get our coats dirty, but no one cares. We're always sure to bath ourselves later. There are so many burbs and moths and other small things to chase. Lots of times we'll explore on our own, but every once in a while we'll chase each other. It's so fun to run around the yard. We can never go too far because there's a bigger fence around the whole place and because the humans are always watching us. One day, Wellies chased a field mouse out from under a rock. The smaller human put us behind the gate and the mouse ran away. Oh well. New humans moved in next door. We've met them and they're very nice. We've never met any humans who aren't nice to us. They have two big barky dogs. We didn't like them at first, but now we don't notice their loud voices anymore. They never come over here for some reason. Goodbye for now, Mr. and Ms. Shiny Butler. The bigger human has started the grill. We don't eat the food he makes, but he's always out here for hours and hours. We like that because it means extra sunshine and fresh air for us. We have a whole yard to patrol. With all headbutts and shaking tails, love, squallies, and wellies. Aw, that is so sweet. I love hearing from these two. It's really nice of you to send that. 
And I love hearing about their little adventures. The pictures that you've posted are just, I think I said last week uh, when it came up, just oh, so beautiful. That yard is amazing. I'm, I'm practically jealous of them. Um, I can't say that I've ever really wanted to be a cat, but that makes me change my opinion on that. Uh, that's a, just an amazing place for them, and I'm sure they love it. The photos are spectacular. I don't think you could take a bad photo in that environment. It's just amazingly beautiful. So they're very lucky little kittens, and I miss them a ton. They, they were just so special to me, and I'm so, so grateful that you adopted them, that they went to someone that, that can really give them their best lives. Um, it means a lot to me. So uh, thank you, and thanks to Squally, Squall and Welly for writing. Very sweet. Okay. Uh, oh, and I was going to say, um, I know that people have seen a lot of pictures of them outside and have been, uh, you know, some people get kind of nervous about that. I, I'd have to admit that I can too. Um, you know, there are, we've had this conversation in the past, uh, you know, um, I think there are, it's, it's a valid choice, um, but it's not a choice that we would really approve of to have an outdoor cat that's just free to roam. Um, and uh, all, especially here in the, in the States or, you know, in Colorado, it doesn't seem like a good place to have a cat that's just free to roam. Um, even there are places where it's, it's, you know, a lot safer for them, uh, but, but I don't know if that's one of them. So it's very nice to hear that they do have an enclosed space that they're playing in. It's not just free to go wherever they want. And I think that, that helps a lot for, uh, for some people. There's probably some people who needed to hear that. I trust that you guys have it covered, but I know that uh, certainly some people would want to know that. So I'm glad that fact was included in there. Uh, okay. So now we have packages. That was our one letter, but that is a great letter. I can just, oh, fantastic. I suspect there will be a letter in here because I think we can tell who this is most likely from. And let's find out. Oh, I didn't cover up the address, so I can see it's definitely from that person. <laughs> uh, the note, okay to read on stream. All right, well, we're gonna do that. Uh, if I can get it open, it's closed up with extra washi tape. That's how you say that, right? I don't know if that's how you say that. Do -do 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 -do. Okay, this knife is not helping. <laughs> really? It's a little too safety. It won't even cut the things it's supposed to. Okay. All right, so this is obviously from Alice the Owl, and it says, Dear Mr. A and DJ, I guess I'm crocheting blankets now. Oh, okay, let's see some of this stuff while we read. Oh, aren't those beautiful? That's a good job. Is, that can't be something that's completely new to you, right? Uh, this is gorgeous. So, I guess I'm crocheting blankets now. No guarantee how long it'll last, but I'm pretty proud of how the crank it and blanket of many colors turned out. I've sent them for crank and gadget respectively. Oh, it's a crank it. I see what you did there. This is the crank it. Uh, that's cute. She'll look so good on this, but I can't possibly give it to her now because it would just need to wash immediately. You did send washing instructions. Machine wash and dry. Oh, hey, well, now that's nice. Um, cause she might always need a lot of washing of her stuff. Um, okay. And the blanket of many colors. I got to see that one. Um, Crank and Jack Greg Gadget respectively for their endowments. They're hundred percent acrylic and machine washable. Oh, you just covered that, which I've noted on the tags. Before I washed them, they were a 10% rafter spit. <laughs> she loves to bite my yarn as I work. Also, the crochet hook, my hands, the brush, the nail clipper, every single toy, and PJ. Yeah, these kittens are in kind of a little bitey experimental phase right now, too. And uh, as I'm sitting there playing video games, they will definitely help me uh, play by biting my fingers. And uh, especially the little girl, Bonnet, likes to attack my feet. And she really gets into it lately where I'll, to try to get her to stop, like I'll pick my foot up and she just hangs off of it. Like I can lift her all the way up and she'll just hang there and continue to bite on my foot. So she's pretty dedicated to it. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Still a bit nippy. Uh, oh, PJ doesn't bite. She's still a bit nippy on my hands, but she has zero interest in yarn, thank thankfully. 
The ones I sent a couple of weeks ago are the same kind I brought when I picked up Rafter and PJ. I knew Gadget likes them because she tried to steal the one I brought by distracting Sam. They're not the most durable, but cats and kittens of a wide variety of ages seem to enjoy them. They're excellent to use higher up on a cat tree. Just be careful, little ones aren't having so much fun they forget how high up they are. PJ loves chasing that toy all the way to the top of my cat trees. Rafter, though, has opinions about playing off the ground. She'll grab the wand in her mouth and carry it as far from the tree as I'll let her. I'm taking precautions to keep the kittens and my things safe. I've anchored my TV to the stand. Oh, that's good. I recommend keywords of earthquake proof or child safe if anyone is looking for their ideal solution. I try not to poke holes in my walls if I can help it and my TV stand is quite solid. Yeah, I don't, you know, um, I've learned through, uh, you know, uh, long years of home ownership, I suppose. Poking holes in the walls is not as bad as you would think. If, if your home is, you know, the standard American uh, drywall and, uh, you know, um, stick construction, I think they call it, but it's just, you know, the standard framing lumber. If, if your walls are like that, like every wall in this house is, don't worry about putting holes in it. Um, you'd have to have the worst landlord ever to really have any trouble with it because it takes 10 seconds to fix it. You just, for small holes where you want to attach something like a drywall anchor, you know, you just go around with a uh, bucket of spackle, you just cover it up and uh, eventually come back and paint over it. It's nothing. Um, and then for the big stuff, uh, putting in a drywall patch is, turns out to be so easy. It's, it's really not that much work. So. Um, I, if, you're, if your landlord charges you a bunch for it, he's probably ripping you off. Uh, and I would hope that a landlord would let you do it yourself, although I can see why they wouldn't maybe trust somebody to random to just fix up the place or put holes in the walls. But, uh, I, you know, I say go ahead. It, you've got my permission anyway. Um, to that end, though, the, the TV stands, a lot of them are straps that you, like, bolt into a stud in the wall, which is a great idea. Uh, there's other ways, though. I think before I've said that I love a, like, a, like a TV on an arm that you clamp to your desk. Uh, that's how we do my monitors. I do all my monitors that way. And then for the actual televisions, I mount them with, with like real solid mounts. I've got a mount that takes like, I think, an 80 pounds worth of TV if you want, but ours never weigh that much, of course. I wouldn't be able to lift them. Uh, but it's like a super solid mount. It's got a pivot on it and everything. You can pull it out from the wall and put it in and you can turn it all around. Fantastic. Um, so I think it's a great thing to do, especially if you have animals or children or earthquakes, um, you know, but I repeat myself. I'm going to keep this short, so I'll sign off here. Thank you again for all the care and expertise you put into raising the kittens at your academy. I remain incredibly grateful for my snuggle support. They're so sweet and lovable, and I'm so happy to have them with me. Fondly, Alice the Owl. All right, Alice, thank you so much. I'll put your letter right there. Your blankets are beautiful. I can't believe, I mean, that's great work. You must have some experience with that already. That surely can't be your first time crocheting anything. Uh, it's great work. They, they're lovely and I know they are going to love them. I'm going to write that on the outside so that I don't have to open the box to remember who the contents are for. I will write gadget and crank or maybe just G and C on that side. That's upside down, but it's only upside down from your perspective. Think about it. <laughs> I <laughs> think you don't have to think about it much. <laughs> um, okay, let's keep rolling here. Wow, I can smell so much crank right now. She's probably still a little bit leaky. Wow, that's a pretty box in here. What is this all about? It says from Trouble and Carry, and uh, it's a, obviously a drop shipment, so that's all we're going to know about it. But the return address is the best gift ever, uh, colon, close parentheses, <laughs> which, which is cute. You'll never guess what's inside. All right, it is the best gift ever. It's in this amazing shiny red box and it says you'll never guess what's inside. Trouble and carry. I won't because you guys have sent us so much crazy stuff over the years, I couldn't even begin to guess. Let's see, uh, it's a heavy, it's kind of heavy. Got some weight to it. It feels like it's probably roughly square in shape. I don't know how I'm getting that. It's a little squeaky too. Is there styrofoam or something in there? That can't be too much. I don't think so. It's something else. Hmm. 
It's uh, uh, underwear, I think. It's always underwear. That's, I learned that from my dad. If you're guessing, it's always underwear. Uh, you'll never guess what's inside. Okay, well, there we go. Yes, someone decided to send you a potato. Well, uh, I don't know why you started that with yes, because I would not have guessed. Aw, it says, this is so ridiculous. It's an actual potato. And on one side, it's printed. It says, everyone needs a tato face. And on the other side, we have, oh, our classic potato face. I can't believe this is a service because they must have put this on there for you. This is not something that came from them directly. That is a crazy thing. It's potatoparcel.com. Uh, okay. That's a little ridiculous. I think I'm going to let DJ try to figure this out too. I'm going to put it right back in there. I'm sure she's not watching. In the weekend mornings, uh, she likes to get up and watch airplanes land. She tunes into a live stream at one of the airports, usually Heathrow and uh, watches the airplanes land. She, whenever there's like a, I think it's the Airbus 380 that she's always like, doesn't it look just like custard? I'm not sure I can see it, but she says it every time, so it must. Uh, Trouble and Carrie, thanks for the Tato face. That Tato face is the most ridiculous little picture, and that's so funny that you sent it on a potato. I did not know that was a thing. I don't know why it's a thing, uh, but I can't imagine that anybody has ever used it more appropriately. So uh, thank you, I think. <laughs> All right, moving right along here. This says, uh, Kitten Academy, enjoy and feed shelter cats. Patty, uh, oh, Piff, uh, you know Piff, P-I-F. Piff has sent us some amazing stuff over the years. I remember, I think it was the first, the first big K con. I think it was the second K-A con where Piff made dioramas uh, little card fold-out dioramas of the Kitten Academy for everyone that attended got one. Ours is still here somewhere, and it's the coolest thing. It's like a little pop-up of the kitten room at the time, and then little figures and, and things that you could put in the room that were all appropriate. So, really cool. This smells so coffee. I'm just sitting here, not looking, but it smells like it's got to be coffee. And so it is. Kitty Town Coffee from Piff. Aw, oh, thank you so much. That's cute. It feels like you wanted to donate to them, but maybe you didn't want the coffee, so you sent it to me. Or maybe you picked it out for me. It is hazelnut, and that is definitely something I like. I can always go for a hazelnut, although this says Max Hazelnut, like it's a kitten's name, and there's a kitten picture on it. That's kind of cute. So, Kitty Town Coffee. That is, whoa, that's very hazelnut. Wow, maybe Max is a name, or maybe it's just a statement about the amount of Either way, it works for me. And it says here, delicious coffee named after cats. Okay, I guess that answers that question. And feeds cats. Every bag of Kitty Town coffee supports your local animal shelter. How cool is that? How does it support your local uh, cat shelter? Do you, when you buy it, do you say who you're supporting, I wonder? Hmm. Well, that part is not entirely clear, but that's super cool. And it doesn't matter if it supports your local shelter or a different one. Kittens all need help, don't they? So uh, thank you. Thank you, Piff. Thank you very much. It's good to hear from you in uh, you know, some small sense and know that you're doing okay. So I uh, greatly appreciate it. And speaking of great, this appears to be from our greatest Scottish fan. Oh, and uh, as usual, there appears to be, is it a letter? Is it a poem? This one got a little banged up in shipping, but that's okay. It says, Dear Mr. A and DJ and all the furries, just a wee note to enclose two copies of a poem I've written for Hazelnut. One is for the Academy, the other is for Hazelnut to take to her forever home. Hazelnut's been an exemplary mother to her kittens. Her attentiveness to their every need has been admirable and marked. Now that her kittens are fully weaned, I hope she'll have the opportunity for more me time and that she'll be able to gain some more weight. I'd love to see a cuddly, well-rounded hazelnut. I've also enclosed closed some wee mindings for her to take to her forever home. I hope that her adutive family will be able from time to time to read Hazelnut's poem to her to remind her that I'm thinking of her and wishing her only the very best that life can offer. It only remains for me to thank the Academy's humans for continuing to care for all the cats and kittens and, by extension, for we humans, too. With lots of love and very best wishes from Joanne, your greatest Scottish fan. All right. Uh, Joanne, thank you. It's so sweet for you to write to us uh, and to always do the poems for the mom cats. I think that's wonderful. So here we go. A poem for Hazelnut, a happy Hazelnut. 
Hazelnut, you are a happy girl, a girl with a zest for life, and as you've undertaken your studies at KA, you've shone like a beacon, so bright. Hazelnut, you're a devoted girl, devoted to your four floofer nuts, and as those kittens have learned from you, their mom, you and they have purred and mewed your way into my heart, and as sure as night follows day, you've benefited from this fresh KA start. Uh, Hazelnut, you're an intuitive girl who instinctively knows how to behave. You are ladylike and refined with impeccable manners and grace and a nature that is sweet as can be. I messed up the meter there because it's as sweet as can be. Uh, we'll continue. So, Hazelnut, my darling, I'm sending you purrs and spoogles across the many miles and know that whenever I think of you and your kittens, you will always bring me so many smiles. Oh, thank you so much, Joanne. That's wonderful. And I know her adopters are going to appreciate it as well. And then your bag of wee mindings. Uh, let's see. This is a really cool fish. It looks, uh, looks a little happy. It's got a smile on. Um, and I know she'll have fun throwing that thing around. Some little uh, wicker balls. Uh, is that, it's not wicker. It's uh, ret uh, no, it's not rattan. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what you call that. It's uh, maybe it is wicker. So little tiny uh, woven wood balls is what we'll say with bells and raffia. Perfect. Those are some wonderful little wee mindings for our wonderful little hazelnut. Okay. She really did a great job raising these kittens. She did everything that they needed at every point. And I think she's a little done with them right now, but who can blame her? She's, uh, she's been through a lot with them already. So I'm gonna try to fit this back in here. Wow, that coffee is such a great thing. It just fills the room with coffee uh, smell. Ah, okay. I'm trying to use your bag to put this stuff back into. It was already a little wrinkled up. All right, that'll be enough. <laughs> Usually I keep your little plastic wrapper, but this time I don't think it's going to work. Okay. Two more boxes. What a brief mailbag today. What do you think, Fezzy? Little Fezzy, Fezzy Wezzy. Okay. Well, this, oh, three more. Uh, this is from Charlie I, and it says right on it, um, to lecturer teaspoon, sir. Wow, sir. Teaspoon. Oh, he's right here. He's on above that camera watching. You probably can't see him, but he's right, he's right there. He's looking the other way, though. Teaspoon, you want to look over here and see what you got? Oh, there's a note first. Hang on. There's a bag in a bag. Oh, okay. Hang on. We're getting there. Okay. There we go. Uh, the bag is perfect for him, actually. That's probably all he wants. If I put that bag out, he typically gets right in them, and he seems like he's about to fall asleep, but he still might go right for it. I wonder. I like that you've already cut the handles on it like we always do. If there's handles on a bag, we always cut them so that the kittens can't get their head through them. Um, ever since we had a... Uh, oh, oh, you sent a whole bunch of bags. That's what this is all about. How cute. Okay, hang on. Sir... I understand that you like getting into takeout food bags. Well, here's a few spare food bags for your use when your humans don't do takeout. There's some smaller food bags for the kittens to practice with before they graduate. Uh, Mr. A, there's a sun catcher for the rainbow room. And again, another question mark. Take care. Charlie purrs and meows from Kevin and Weirdo. Aw, that's perfect. Thank you so much for sending him bags. That's He, he really does still love them. And, He's looking at it right now, even though he still looks like he's just about to fall asleep. I'm just going to leave this here for one second and see if he comes to investigate it. He's definitely looking right at it. Focused. Well, as focused as he can be with his eyes half closed. I think he's decided not now. Uh, this is cute, though. The little tiny bags. I want to get put one of those out right now. I love that you've cut every handle on every bag. How thoughtful. Okay. So... There we go. Here's a tinier bag. You, oh, you're interested in that one too, huh? You want to hop in there, see what's in there? Okay. Well, I'll leave it right there and you can decide if you go for one of those. All right. Oh, he is. He's going to go for it. He just got up. He's walking that way now. Which one are you going to go for though? The big one or the little one? Or are you going to check them both? 
right in the bag. I told you, he, he cannot resist a bag. All right. Oh, this is beautiful. It's a perfect sun catcher for the rainbow room. It's a little stained glass. I love stained glass. Uh, it's a stained glass rainbow. That will be perfect. That room gets direct sunlight in the mornings, and this will be beautiful in there. As you can see, oh, the colors are fantastic on that. And I do love all kinds of stained glass. This is, this is fantastic. The little blue circle at the bottom is an interesting addition. I don't know if, if it's supposed to represent something or if it's just there to sort of fill out the shape, uh, but it's cute. All right, that's lovely. Uh, oh, and there's a little thing to hang it up with too. How thoughtful. That's fantastic. Now you did say there's a question mark something else, but I don't know if there, um, if there is anything else in here. I think that, oh, oh, wait a minute. It's tucked in the bags. <sighs> Clever, okay. It says number four. I don't know what that means. Oh, I know what this is gonna be. Do you guys know what this is gonna be? I got a really good guess. Teaspoon, do you know what this is gonna be? I bet it's one of those, isn't it? It's a little teaspoon, let's find out. So it is, yes, I still haven't bought the rack for these, but I need to, oh, this is so cute. It's a ceramic teaspoon, and it's got a little kitten that looks like teaspoon on it, and he's got his little paws out so that you can hook him over the edge of your teacup. And so he can sit in the teacup with his little paws sticking out like this. How cute, that is adorable. Tiny little ceramic spoon. Oh, that's the cutest teaspoon, okay, that's perfect. Thank you very much, Charlie, for that. Thank you for the bags, which Teaspoon's already checked out, and I guess he's gone to do something else now. That's okay. He still likes the bags. Uh, thank you so much for sending that. I, the sun catcher's gonna be beautiful. I can't wait to see that in, with the sun on it. That's, uh, that's gonna be fantastic. Okay, uh, here we have something from Mayhem Boozle, and it's got the Kitten Academy logo on the outside, too. So, let's take a look. Mayhem and Bamboozle have sent us, well, there's a note in the middle. There's a water filter. I got a new water fountain and had one leftover filter. I think I've seen cat at fountains on the stream, so I figured you'd put it to use. Yes, actually, I should get these kids a fountain and see what they think of it now that they're big enough. Uh, thank you for that. Oh, this is so cute. Uh, it's uh, one of those diamond art things. It says, I choose to be a unicorn. And it's, got a, it's like a unicorn with a, a rainbow horn and little heart-shaped glasses on. It says, that's all it says, I choose to be a unicorn. Okay. Dear Mr. A and DJ, thanks for being a wonderful unicorn in this crazy world. You, DJ, and KA are a much-needed magical addition to my day-to-day -day life. Discord is for sure the best place on the internet. Hope you have an awesome start to fall. Love and spoogles. K bless 17, Mayhem, Bamboozle, and Daisy. Thank you so much for that. I think there's more. All right, it says, what is that that you guys are so interested in? Is it just because it's paper? What's in there? Dear Mr. Andy J, guess what? It's my birthday today. I'm writing this on 924 in case you wanted to know. Uh, this is cute. I can see this probably is what they were looking for though. I bet this smells great to them. Um, it says, we got some new toys. Oh, and it's Bam's birthday too. We got some new toys from a place that our mom called the endowment tub, whatever that means, and they are so much fun. She says they're gifts from people who are watching you read this letter, which is so cool, thank you. We also got Churu, and instead of sharing, we got one all for ourselves. Usually we have to share three ways with our older sister, Daisy, but not today. Today I got one whole one just for me. So did Bam. And Daisy did too, which is okay, I guess, even though it's not her birthday. When our mom asked what else special we'd like to do on our birthday, we said we wanted to write you a letter and send you a birthday present. Mom says usually gifts are for the ones with the birthday, but we don't care, so we wanted to send you a present anyways. I picked out a bag of our new favorite treats because I heard you really love lobster. We actually got them for the first time as an I'm sorry treat from our mom because she did something really bad. I was on her lap and she made me get off because she said she had to leave to go out for breakfast with friends. That doesn't seem like a very good reason to me, but I was happy when she came home with new treats. If you don't like them, you can give them to DJ or I guess the kittens and faculty. 
I hope you're having lots of fun and getting lots of kitten spoogles. I miss spoogling with you, but I do love it here with Bam and our mom and even big sister Daisy. She lets me lick her head, which I just love doing. It's very clean. Love, mayhem. P.S. Our mom says we're old enough now to help her type our notes. <coughs> help, help type. Blah, blah, blah. To help her type out our notes to print out now. We're not very good at it. We like to just sit on the keyboard better, so we need lots of help, but we did get to pick the font. That's cute. <laughs> I love hearing from these. Uh, okay. Dear Mr. A and DJ, guess what? It's my birthday today, and it's May's birthday too. We've gotten lots of extra treats and new toys, and I even got my very own Churu. I love biting them so it gets everywhere, and, I, and then I have to lick it off my mom's hands. She doesn't seem to like that as much, which I don't understand, but oh well. We get to go outside on the balcony now. We have a little enclosure that connects to the inside by a tunnel, and it's fun. I can go outside, and then go back inside, and then go back outside, and then go back inside, and then go back outside. I like doing that a lot. We live on a big river, which is fun to watch, and also the walkway below us, where lots of dogs go walking. You can't get in those bags, buddy. They're not open. He's acting like he actually wants to get in it. Really? Oh, he just meowed at me. Oh, buddy, look, there's one right here. Try this one. It's ready to go. Here, hang on. I'll bring it over there. Try this. Will you fit in there? Here, I'll hold it for you to make it easier. He's like, I don't know. I've seen him try to fit into smaller bags. Come on, buddy. Uh, okay. Where was I? Um, the walkway below us where lots of dogs go walking. They come in so many different colors and sizes and some make a lot of barking noises. So rude. I also love to do something my mom calls shaka shaka for some reason. She says I'm silly because I do it a lot and uh, do it a lot of different places. I like the mirror best, but the toilet and shower wall are also great, are great too. Uh, Sometimes my mom takes a video of me and posts it on Discord, which is okay with me because I like to see the pictures and videos on there, especially my brothers and sisters. My mom also says I'm silly for still nursing on my own tummy, but I think it's great, not silly, and she doesn't know what she's missing. I love doing it every morning on her lap while she drinks her coffee. I asked if we could have some now that we're two years old, but she says no java for the kitty. Bummer. Lots of love. Bamboozle. How sweet. Those, those are great letters. Thank you so much. It's cute to hear that Bam still nurses on herself. Uh, it's ridiculous. So this is cute. So uh, the treats that you sent are more lobster cheese. Uh, lobster and cheese flavor crunchy cat treats. I bet this is going to be a big hit. Uh, I was just thinking about using it as apology treats myself because I have a lot of apologizing to do to poor little Crank. She just gets so upset at the stuff that we have to put her through, but you know, it's necessary, but I think that um, having some kind of a treat there to give her could probably take the edge off a little bit. I was thinking about that before mailbag, since I had just gone to clean her before mailbag. Uh, and this morning she was particularly upset about her bath. I don't know where she went now. I was just looking to see if I could see her, but she's probably in the other room in the in the ottoman or something. Hi, do you want to try one of these? Since you're right here, I can tell you're sniffing around. Here, try this. He's like, where's that smell coming from? It's coming from my fingers. Look, it's right here in my hand. Try that. Oh, is that a good one? Okay, here, I'll put it right there. It's right here now. You're not good at following that, are you? It's right here. Here, okay, try that. There you go. Oh, oh, you dropped it again. Okay, hang on. Here, try that. It's right there. Got it now? No, that's my finger. Oh, oh, okay, here. We'll drop it on the floor where you can find it. Watch right here. Okay. The, sometimes when it falls on the floor and it makes a little noise, that makes it easier for them to track, too, than just if it falls on my leg. So uh, thank you so much. I think those treats are going to be a big hit. And like I said, I'm going to try them out on Crank and see if she likes them. She can't have too many treats because we're trying to watch out for her digestion and stuff. But, uh, you know, a little treat here and there. It's just that's, that's why they're treats and not a meal, I guess. I thought that was going to fit in my pocket, but it won't. Okay, uh, so that leaves us with one last box. Let's see what we got here. I know. Are you looking for another one now, Stetson? Okay, buddy. Well, I don't think so. Oh, all right. This is a, one of our, oh, it's a bunch of our usuals, actually. Now, is there a note? Oh, that smell. Oh, this is from Chewy, so there's not going to be a note in here, but it does say it's from, uh, I think this is from Mishi. I think this is from Mishi. It doesn't actually say that, but I think I know that name. So that's what we're going to go with. And uh, 
It contains some springs, a classic. It contains the Yao Catnip Rainbow and Banana, two classics. And then this one, not as much of a classic, but we have seen it before. It says, I'm kind of a big dill, and it is a pickle. Catnip stuff to entice the pickiest of cats. All right, and it's got a, a crinkle in it, and it's got this mesh on the back that's supposed to help them clean their teeth. I don't know if that's the case or not, but uh, I've certainly seen that claim on a lot of those toys. So, uh, Mishi, thank you so much for sending those. If you had some particular recip recipient in mind, you'll have to let me know and we'll make sure that they get it. Uh, otherwise, that's mailbag, everybody. That was it, the whole thing. Um, it was a little bit short, but I guess not, not too short. I guess I rambled enough to kind of fill up that time. Uh, so, I guess we'll leave it there. I see that most of the kittens are starting to take their nap time. These two are still wandering around, but I bet they'll fall right down for a nap if I start going. So I gotta take, put all this stuff away, shuffle some kittens, and uh, get on with the rest of my day, I guess. I hope you guys have a good day too, and a good weekend, and a good week, and a good year. Uh, I just hope it's all good things for you, and for me. I'll, I'll give that to myself too, why not? All right, uh, let's pack this stuff up. I'm gonna put away the microphone right now. This is, I think, the second week in a row I forgot to put away the microphone receiver. It's still got charge, fortunately, but I don't, if I don't do it now, I'm gonna forget a third time. We don't want that. So I'm gonna do that first. Well, it's on my mind. that door. We'll just take care of it right now. I put the den camera on so that you guys can see that Logan Berry does get a chance to play with his toy. And these guys need a second go at breakfast, which I'll give them as soon as I put the other two kittens away. It's neither teaspoon nor crank can have their food. Oh, do I still need a trash bag in here? No, I emptied this once already this morning, didn't I? I think I did. You guys just are big poopers. You got a lot of poopings to do. That's good too. Healthy little kittens. Healthy little poops.
Give me this food coming, buddy. It's not for you, not this food. You have to go upstairs. Come on, let's go. You and I'll stink a door. Oh, come on, stinky. Oh, you kind of made that stinky too, huh? Okay. 